Welcome to episode six from the balcony. Hope you're all doing well, staying healthy, staying safe. Let's get into today's lockdown video. Today we're back on the iPad and we're talking Affinity Photo for the iPad. Now, I think it was episode two, not that long ago, I, I did a, an Affinity Photo for the iPad video did a little demonstration on, on how I was using it and at the time I was pretty disappointed with how the uh, app was working on my on my iPad it was crashing and it had some uh, stability issues I went ahead and did the video thinking that other people might not be having the same issues as, as I am maybe they have a different version of the iPad and I want to be fair and balanced so since I made that video shortly after, I've had no issues whatsoever with the app, the app running smoothly on my iPad Air 3. I think they updated it, took care of the, the stability issues, and so I'm, I'm really enjoying my time with uh, Affinity Photo for the iPad. So I just wanted to be fair and, and do another video that stated where I was with uh, the app and I'm, I'm much happier now. I've been using the computer version of Affinity Photo for a couple years now for all my photo editing and have been very happy with it. It's been a, a really good replacement for Photoshop for me. And so I was looking for this app to be something I could use um, away from home for times where I needed something more mobile. this I think this app's going to easily fill that uh, niche for me. It might even encroach on uh, pushing out the computer version. It's, it's that good. I'm really enjoying my time with uh, this app. And since I have all this extra time right now, it's been a lot of fun to kind of explore what this app can do. And I'm just scratching the surface right now. So I figured, well, besides just talk about Affinity Photo and say it's working okay, I might as well just do a little demo uh, on another way I use this app. So we're going to do a black and white conversion using the tone mapping persona in Affinity Photo. It's probably not the most typical way to convert black and white images, but I uh, am really coming to like this, uh, this approach. So let's take a look at this demonstration on how I'm converting my digital files to black and white. So I thought we'd start with this image that I used in the uh, last Affinity Photo demonstration. And we're going to convert that to black and white in the tone mapping persona. We're going to press the tone mapping icon above. And you see it's pretty light, so we're going to open the Basic Studio and we're going to pull back the tone compression to where it looks about right. And then we're going to take the saturation and dial it down to minus 100%. And we're going to lighten it up just a little bit. It's a little dark using the exposure. And I like to add a little tonal contrast just gives a little more definition you want to be careful with that though because you can overdo that quite easy now we're going to go to the overlays hit the brush and we're going to create a an overlay and make the brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to paint in the sky. I have the hardness set at 50%. What I'm going to do is try to uh, bring back a little bit of the sky that we uh, lightened up. I don't want it to be quite as light as, as it is here. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and fast forward through this as I do the overlay. And we're going to go up to the uh, basic studio and we're going to darken that sky just a little bit. I'm 
it looks pretty good. Then we'll go back to the overlay a little bit. I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna lighten that with the opacity just a little bit. I think it I think I dialed in just a little bit too much of the darkness. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit apply. And we're gonna go into the photo persona. I think I want to lighten this just a little bit, just a little bit more. So we're going to go into the brightness contrast adjustment layer. We're just going to just lighten it up just a little bit, add just a little bit of contrast. And then we're going to go to levels and do another adjustment layer. I'm going to be working on this we'll be working on for the sky. We're going to want to adjust the whites. Just clean them up a little bit. The, the sky seems a little flat. Add a little black back into the sky just to give it a little more definition. And then we're going to go up to layers and we're going to hit plus and add a mask layer. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to be removing everything from, from that adjustment layer except for the sky. So we're going to paint over the foreground. We're going to make sure the brush, we're going to click brush and we're going to make sure it's on black. And that's going to remove everything we've done in the foreground and we're going to not touch the sky. So basically we're just taking this right back to before the levels adjustment layer except for the sky. I just want to click the box on the levels adjustment layer so I can see the difference. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're going to go up to layers and click on the pixel layer and we're going to take this back to the develop persona. This is where I'm going to, I just like to double check and see where I'm clipping the blacks and the whites. I forgot to tell you how you toggle the highlights and the shadows. You just go up to the dot, the, the three dots above, and then you just scroll down. And that way you, there's, that's where you, you can toggle the highlights and the shadows. It's kind of important information. I want to take it pretty close to the edge, so I'm getting close to pure black and close to close to white in some of the highlights in this scene. The highlights are showing red when there's no detail, when it's completely clipped, and the blacks are showing in blue when there's no information there. This just gives me a little more control and to uh, keep my image from, from looking too flat. When I'm happy with where the the whites and blacks are, I'll I'll go ahead and hit develop. And details look pretty good. So I'm gonna go up to layers, click on the pixel layer and you don't have to duplicate it, but I, I, I like to do this. This is part of my workflow. I just like to have that, that extra extra pixel layer just in case I change my mind later. And I'm, I don't often do a vignette, but I think we'll do a vignette on this one. And what you're going to want to do is, is turn exposure down just a little bit and set the hardness to 100% first. So you can find the uh, set the shape of the vignette gives you a nice de def defined line so you can kind of see the shape before you actually start softening it up. And once you kind of get the shape you, that you want for your image, you can then reduce the, the hardness quite a bit. And you'll just, this is something you have to kind of play with and just to kind of see how you, just to see how you like it, do it to taste. I like it kind of subtle, and this isn't something I do that often, but uh, I thought I'd just go ahead and, and show you how it's done on this on this video. Some, sometimes it's, it's um, 
can be a, a useful way of bringing your eye to where you want in the image. Just have to play with the size, the, the exposure, and the hardness just to kind of get what you want. Then you can toggle it on and off to see the effects. It looks pretty good. It's kind of subtle. And that's that's uh, the finished photo. I'll go ahead and I'm going to add a border to this image. I've, I've showed how to do that in my last video, so I'm not going to go through that again. This is how I convert digital color images into black and white using the tone mapping persona. Well, I hope you got something out of that demonstration. When I do these little demonstration videos, I'm not saying this is how you should edit your photos. I'm just saying this is how I like to do it. It could be wrong. I may be changing the way I do it six months from now. But right now, this is how I like to edit my photos. I'm not claiming to be an expert. I just I like to use my software in a practical way. And if I'm getting the results I want, that really that's all that matters. And if you do it different and get the results you want, that's all that matters. So I'm going to go ahead and end today's video right here. Thanks for joining me out here on the balcony. And until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.